Hi, this is Dr. Sharon Celine with uh, Tuesday Tips at Two, and today we're going to talk about some recent findings uh, regarding depression um, among teenagers and millennials that were kind of disturbing to me, and I felt like it was important to bring this to your attention and figure out some ways that you might be able to support your teen or millennial to do things differently that would reduce the risk of depression or some uh, symptoms that they already might be having. So a uh, health insurance company, Cigna, recently conducted a survey and found that 50% of Americans feel alone or left out always or sometimes. Mem members of Generation Z, kids born between the mid-1990s and the early 2000s, had the highest scores of loneliness, with millennials just a few years older close behind them. Interestingly, people ages 72 and above, who you would think would feel lonely, had the lowest scores. So we know that loneliness affects physical and mental health. Working too much or too little can also affect loneliness. A lot of recent research, ha though, suggests that more screen time and social media have caused a rise in depression and suicide among uh, American adolescents. The study also found that people who spend less time looking at screens and more time having face-to-face -face social interactions are less likely to be depressive or suicidal. How people use social media determine its influence on your sense of isolation. If you're just scrolling feeds, there are more negative effects than if you're using um, social media to reach out and connect to people and set up in-person get-togethers. Another study showed that millennials and teenagers have experienced the fastest climb in depression diagnosis rates, up 47% for uh, millennials and 63% for teenagers. And women are diagnosed with a major depression at double the rate of men. So we have females being increasingly diagnosed with depression and particularly um, adolescent girls. So again, the research showed that electronics play a major role. Nighttime use of cell phones can increase anxiety and depression in teenagers, causing disrupted sleep and reducing self-esteem. Also, there's uh, increased family conflict around using technology, which can increase someone's feeling of hopelessness or helplessness or just general level of stress that could lead to some depression. So what are we going to do about all this? Um, the solution obviously isn't getting rid of technology because that's not going to happen, but we want to use it wisely and part of a balanced life. So. What we want to do is set limits around technology use and stick with them. So make a regular time to turn off your devices that gives you a screen-free hour before bed. If uh, you're a parent, offer your kids alternatives to video games and social media by doing something together. Maybe playing a board game, doing a puzzle, um, cooking, playing, uh, obviously you're not going to do this before bed, but playing tennis or basketball, or even going to a movie. Uh, at night, if they turn off their phones, maybe you could watch a TV show together for a half hour. While that is, of course, a screen, you're um, doing something together. And particularly for parents of teenagers, um, that can be a nice way to connect. You're probably talking during the commercials or talking about the show. So you're hanging out together. Um, uh, have your teens turn their cell phones in at night to your care and give it back to them in the morning. Um, this helps them really monitor themselves um, because they can't access their phone. If they have their phone in their room and are using it for an alarm, the temptation to go on and see what's happening is, is right there and it's much greater. And particularly for kids who have ADHD, it's very hard to resist that temptation. So you also want to talk with your teens and millennials about what I call the fake book phenomenon. No one ever posts pictures of themselves mid-breakout or shares news that they failed an algebra test. What you see on Facebook or Instagram 
or sometimes Snapchat are, you know, glimpses of lives that look really good. And in comparison, however you're feeling about your life may look worse. And that can contribute to lower self-esteem and of course, um, cycle down into depressive feelings. So you want to help your kids increase face-to-face -face connections so that they can see and understand what's really going on with someone and that someone can see what's really going on with them. Um, you can't take any kind of emotional weather report from your cell phone. You really have to be with someone to perceive the, all the social nuances and the facial expressions that you won't get on a screen. And teenagers and millennials really need to, to practice these skills because they're important to have in the workplace, at school, in interpersonal relationships. They're, they're just essential. So you want to help your kids build these social schools. <laughs> That's so funny. Build these social skills by, um, you know, fostering or encouraging them to make in-person connections. The other thing is to remember that kids with ADHD in particular who struggle with impulse control need extra support in learning how to transition off devices, as well as on developing and focusing on other ways to entertain themselves. For their now, not now brains, it's really hard to leave something that's immediately fun and rewarding like their video games or Snapchat um, for anything else. So make sure that you create incentives that matter to them to help them ease off the technology and decide in advance what your easy off plan will be. Expect that they'll push back, but stick with your agreement and refer them back to the agreement over and over again. If they're still having trouble transitioning off, sit down with them and really brainstorm what might work better. You have to include them in the process of creating smooth transitions. Um, you also need to help kids figure out what else to do with themselves other than be on technology. And, and that can be difficult because most of these kids have grown up with technology. It's a natural second language to them. And so thinking about other options of ways to entertain themselves may take some time. So sit down and make a list of things that they can do that's not technology that might entertain them. And that may include listening to music, um, and that is technology, but it's different. And you'll have to figure out how you're gonna create that um, in their lives. Um, but I think that the more that you can work together with them and show them your interest in themselves, the better that will go. So next week, I'm actually changing my broadcast to 7 p.m. I was gonna do it this week, but unfortunately, um, I wasn't well and uh, wasn't able to plan it accordingly. So next week, I'm gonna do a live broadcast at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time so people can call in, or actually you don't call in, you write in <laughs> your um, questions. And we're gonna be talking about motivating kids with ADHD and also motivating yourself if you have ADHD. So I hope you'll join me and uh, have a great day. And thanks for uh, tuning in. Bye-bye.